HRBRadio.com. The words and opinions you are about to hear are of the hosts and do not reflect the management, sponsors, or affiliates. The 11th. It's 7 11. Oh, it is set one of the. Yeah, don't forget your free, free, free Slurpee. Do you re- is that for real? Is it that is a real a, thing? Yeah, it is. Y- you I can get like one. a like a mini free Slurpee because they got their their butts kids. handed to yeah. them for doing that. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can see. I'm so happy to be here. Good. So am I. We got some special guests. We do. And it, we've got a co host showing. Hi, Katie. Hi. How, how are, are you? you? I'm good. Katie, okay. and you're here with. Cody, your husband, yes? Yes, yes. I mean, yes, I'll you claim are him. here. Yes. I'll claim I'll him. Claim him. I'm here. I'll claim him. Charles? <laughs> yes? How are you? Pretty good. How about yourself? Good. Yeah. I'm actually in a really good mood today. It's, it's good. Me too. Me too. Same. Yeah. Same. I don't know if it's the sun. It's not the lady driving the caravan that flipped me off on Telegraph on the way up here. Or the Did guy she cut on you off? I... Uh, no, no. I'm sure I wronged her. <laughs> and I apologize unreservedly to that lady, whoever you are. Al, how's it going? Big Al and Rachel, she's off camera on purpose. That's I mean, okay. By her choice. That's I want okay. Her on camera. Nice to see everybody. It's Likewise. Good to, see you. good to be here. Yeah. So let's um, let's get to know you guys a little bit. I think that's no, great. No. <laughs> she's like, no, yeah. no. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just gonna just see. Uh, oh, by the way, let's put our phones on buzz before I forget, because. Yeah, this is like just like the theater. Get your buttered popcorn. Get ready to go. Turn your phone on silent. Thank you. All right, Katie and Cody, how did you guys get here? And I'm going to ask you the same question. With a car. We we drove a car here. (laughs) All right. The rumors of her driving a camel over here were apparently unfounded. (laughs) (laughs) I played the fact. All right, Cody, do you have a deeper answer than (laughs) I do? How do we get here? Because we're blessed to be here. Truth. So. Have you always been a uh, here we are people that talk like that um, usually believe in God or Jesus on some level, correct? Yes. Does that is that where you are? Yeah. Have you been like that your entire? Have you always believed, or is this something that's? No, I just what is it? Been what? Four years? Mm-hmm. Three years? Four years? Yeah. Four, about, about four years. But I mean, I, when I was young, didn't believe believe something. You know, like they, they, the something exists, but it wasn't a higher power. You know what I mean? Until life travels, then you figure it out. Then you start going to church. Then you start seeing people. And were you were you people. raised in any like particular religion? I bounced. Like I was with a foster family that went to a Catholic church, but I had to sit there. Couldn't do nothing. Couldn't be anything. So didn't really know what a church was at that point um, until, I mean, what, 39, 38, 39? I was almost 40 years old before I figured it out. Same here. I was 42. Yeah. What was it that uh, got you over the hump? Was there like some 
if Calvin, you feel comfortable Calvin talking Isaac about Mom. it on radio, yeah. if you don't feel comfortable well, talking about it. I but. mean, you know, it was, it, it was a blessing in disguise, so to speak. So a divorce is what really got me there, you know. Two and kids, if you're listening, divorce. Crystal, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby mama's listening. But everything's good, you know, and that's what it took. So it took the push. It took the fall off the hill. It took the roll, you know, the turd rolling downhill, and there it landed. Why is it that most people find God, and it's even written, he <laughs> writes it in a bunch of places, he goes, most of you are going to find me when you're suffering, like when you're, it's kind of like in a foxhole, there's no atheist. You know, the very last thing you're always saying is, my God, you know, you but know what I mean? I think mean? that's what it takes. I think it takes that push. Nobody's really going to witness it until you're, what? People don't, you see, all the stories is, you know, oh, I was near-death experience and saw God. You know, like, it takes you to hit rock bottom to even find anything you're looking for because you can walk through your whole life and you're not, you can talk about it. You're not going to take that corner and seek it, you know, unless you really, really want to. You have to put your mind to it or whatever else. I think, I think a lot of people are like that. Like, you got, yeah. you've, got, you've always got that conversation in your head. Yep. But then, you know, I, I read a book, like, who is the person in your head that you're talking to? Well, that's me, isn't it? Mm. Or is it not? And that was, this is so cool because I, that, I just tied that into the tattoo on your hand, mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the church that mm -hmm. we go to together. And he just compared the, uh, the holy, holy, holy to, you know, we are all of that in the same. And then when you're, who am I talking to? Well, I am that part of me, that, that God, like I'm talking to him, I'm talking to me, I am my re I'm responsible for myself while I'm here. Right. Just like so many things that I have learned just in the like four or five times that have actually been to service with these two. Mm -hmm. And it's been within the last couple of months and it's just like, I've, I've been in and out of church a lot more often since I was a teenager never necessarily stopped believing but i was i had to be a teenager in in my faith and go and push the limits and find out where i was at with that and and be like well, mm -hmm. well f you yeah. i'm gonna find out how far i can go right. without you you're not gonna do anything to me and then right. and then he went <laughs> i'll see you on the other side and i was like ah, <laughs> and then like you said that foxhole you're in that foxhole yeah. and i got i got hurt really bad and it was a divorce for me too see that's always so interesting to me because i grew up extraordinarily religious mm -hmm. uh what was what was the catholic <laughs> roman catholic and by for me there's a very big difference between being religious mm -hmm. and being a i believe in what's written in this book i just think that this really is the word of god and, and we'll get into why later but mm -hmm. uh Religious man-made religions, like how we try to reconcile ourselves with God. Well, see, my whole every thing single one been, of them, I think, are. I love God, but I hate organized religion. Yeah, I'm with you. I always have, um, but I I don't ever want to talk down upon it. My older brother is a Catholic priest. Mm -hmm. He does amazing things for the mm -hmm. church. Uh, he goes above and beyond when it comes to the church. But I just always had a bad taste in my mouth for me personally with the Catholic Church. And I, I guess it's not that different, though, because I hit rock bottom before I found out my truth right. when it came to him. And it was a very dark point of my life that I literally was on my knees screaming, looking up, Same. sobbing, Same. sobbing, screaming on the floor. How long ago was this? Uh, it will be 14 years next Easter. For, okay, so. 14 years. Um, so, like, I had, a, I had an issue. For a while, I had a little bit of a demon that I overcame, and I overcame that demon on an Easter Sunday. And ever since then, I, I needed to find my relationship with him that wasn't toxic. And I felt like a lot of the churches that I went to, they... Him being Jesus you're talking about or with Cody? Him being God. Him okay. being God. No, no not Cody. <laughs> Cody oh, is the I took your. Thing from I was toxic. about to take your guys' survey of who wears the pants. We're in gonna the like family. doctor. It's fifty-fifty. It, 
It, it really is. It, it's 50-50. It really I, is. I, when I saw it, it was 55-45, and I'm like, I do not want to swing the balance of power it's here. Just, I don't it, know it's enough. It's just 5%, and that just includes because I choose what's for dinner. That's the only reason <laughs> right. that's a 5%. A little bit of arsenic. It's a little bit, a little bit over. Yep. But I just I think that people find God in broken places because a hospital is for sick, peop- sick people where like a church is for the spiritually sick. Mm-hmm. But so sometimes yeah. you wind up finding churches that want to add into your spiritual sickness or make you feel like you're doing something wrong when you're really not. Um, and once I wrap my head around what my truth was in my relationship with God, and then I eventually found a church that fit into, I almost treated it like a relationship looking for churches. Yeah. I think that you should be just as picky with churches as you should be with who you marry. And if you're not comfortable and you can't be your true self in that environment, you shouldn't be there because it's toxic. Yeah. But people can use religion, churches, in all many different ways. Yeah. It, it's really if you take your mind to that point to seek it. You know, we can talk about it. We can be about, you know, I've stood many times when I was young, standing in front of crosses like, I need you. You know what I mean? Right. But you really have to believe. You really have to feel it. You can't just be like, well, I'm going to go to church tomorrow. You know, I'm going to feel great. I'm going to go to church. And then you don't go for Get my get into heaven free card. Yeah. And then you just don't go. And And when you you figure out that, like, every single freaking thought that you have is Mm -hmm. a prayer. It's just like, it's it not is a like when you're. It's, a it's, a, it's, it's a like an open. Mm-hmm. I always like metaphorically think of it as like an open Skype. Yeah. Just open all day, and I'm like piping in all the time. It makes me monitor my thoughts too, like because I thought about I I was like lying awake at night the other the night just thinking, why do you only ever recognize it or do something about it when you're in that foxhole mm-hmm. when you're going oh god and i need you thing. now that's and then i try thing. to remind myself like you know what when things are going really good mm-hmm. how about you just take a second to go like yep. oh god, thank you yep. thank you for that god yep. recognize the good things and more good well, things like start to flood in to like the 50s and all that stuff they would sit in a rocking chair they would open the bible they would go and just read yeah and live it and love it and enjoy it and share it, it. Every day, yeah, and sit at their Sunday dinner table and mm-hmm. just give it to everybody around them. Yep. We lost it. We don't have that no more. No, no I mean, we used, to to be, we used to be raised around a family dinner table yep. that where the Bible literally was in the middle of yep. it. And yep. it didn't have to be a Sunday. It, it no, was it, this was an weekend. American way of yep. life. Like, you know, I, I do these quotes all the time, which I think you guys have seen, and it's amazing, but every mm-hmm. president – up until around the time of John F. Kennedy, talked about Jesus Christ and God openly. And since then, it's taboo. I mean, in 1963, we outlawed the Bible in its you know, first form yeah. for the first time. Yeah. And our country is basically, I mean, you can not look at all the dirt in the corners, but our country is falling apart morally, financially. <laughs> we're, we're just following the exact same... Just the same progression that every civilization discussed in, you know, this book went through. And even the little things like uh, one of the signs, and I'm making no judgments about this. I'm the last guy to judge anything. But it's like one of the signs of, you know, when God starts to pull his hand of protection away from a nation. Because there have been two, I believe, that have been made under God. One is Israel and the United States. And uh, this is what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah and, and countless other cities. Is one of the signs that God is basically leaving a nation, like he's pulling his hand of protection, the Holy Spirit, however that works. Pulling it away is he gives the nation over to homosexuality. It's sort of an odd comment that, you know, is written in a few different places yeah. there. And when I look at, you know, you a few years ago we uh, legalized um, – Gay marriage, mm-hmm. okay? And again, I'm not making judgments about this. I, I'm just, I just talk about what's written in here. That's it. Right. And there was something more going on with that because if you noticed, I don't know if you guys remember that day a couple of years ago where so, everyone's logo of the Fortune 500 was in rainbow colors. Mm-hmm. Even the White yeah. House on the yeah. day yeah. the law was passed. Now, you got to think about this because – the White House is not supposed to really have an opinion of, you know, 
con- get congressional or senatorial rulings uh, or to be certainly the president, you know, can root for a bill to pass or not. But what was very interesting is the very day that passed, the White House, as of that night, was lit up in rainbow colors. Did you guys see that? Mm-hmm. I didn't see it, but I know what you speak of. And the thing is, is that takes planning. It's not like those guys were – and the same with all of the Fortune 500 logos that went rainbow. And if you saw our last few episodes, you know, we've linked basically the Fortune 500 and the banks and the oil companies to oh, this, yeah. this invisible government. And we're going to hear from some guys today that yeah. also identified it. And uh, but see, like, I, I feel like, though and, – and I'm sorry, but I feel like they did that almost as – because, like you said, it took planning takes planning to do things like that. And I feel like that was done as a very strategic move to pretend to be supportive, where me and you might have very different opinions when it comes to the Bible and that particular subject. Because just that is a very sensitive subject to me. And and I battle with it in between my Christianity and me as a human. And if you you do go... through and you look at the the segments that are related to homosexuality in the Bible, they're always forced situations, like with Sodom and Gomorrah. They were forced situations. They were rape situations, so to speak. I've dug through this countless times, and I have never found an example of a loving relationship between a man and a man, and a loving relationship between a woman and a woman. So, I, I... that's just my viewpoint on it. You know, and some people might hear this. Wrong, and but they I might... do believe that the banks and, and, the, and the White House, and it was a fake representation of, we support you. So we like our, your votes, and we like your money, mm-hmm. and we like this, so make sure that we keep getting this. I know that, I'm s- certainly that's probably in that equation. But this would have been, it actually would have been a little more than two years ago because Obama was still in office. And he wasn't about to be reelected, so it wasn't just political. There was something else going on. But a lot of people might hear this and go, oh, he, he's, he's, a, he's anti-gay or homophobic. No, I don't think you are. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, there's things that, you know, there's a lot of stuff written in this book that have ch- is changing my way of thinking in my – All of it, yeah. And um, it's just one of those things where, you know, if you start to seek, you will, I think, find. And you said something interesting, which is that little voice in your head. Mm-hmm. Because I've had that voice too, which I've wondered. It's either everybody does some sort of inner voice that now I used to believe we evolved until I actually looked at the science. In fact, we used to we once talked about that like four years ago. I now really believe we were created statistically, mathematically, by by ana- analyzing DNA, whatever you want to do. There is no way we evolved. It's absolutely it's not. It's such a ridiculous <laughs> idea. It just you. People that believe that you just see, well, you can see there's already brainwashing work. And it worked I mean, on me until I was 42 years Nobody actually, even ever later. points out, but well, even yeah. Darwin said, this is, this may not be, this may not be right. He even admits it. Like, this well, is probably well, not theory. right for Well, for exactly. Us. It's a it's theory. A theory. Yes. It still is a theory. And by his own, by the way, you guys don't have to wear headphones if you don't. I know. I, Unless you I, just I kind of like that I can hear myself yeah, to know if I'm too close or too far. She just likes to hear herself talk. I do. <laughs> so, yeah, Darwin <laughs> like even said, <laughs> you know, everyone thinks, because again, National Geographic comes out and says, we, you know, we're looking for the missing link, like the, like there's one. And Darwin had said that actually, because he came out with uh, on species, you know, the human evolution, which basically has three components, but he said, we are going to find so much, if my theory is correct, we're going to find so much archaeological evidence of these uh, essentially hybrids. Everything that goes from, you know, from a banana to what we are today, we should find skeletal remains of not one, but literally millions of different type of humanoids that mutated themselves out or selected themselves out. We've never that's, even found That's always no. been my reaction. One. Is, well, and it's always like, I feel like it's like the dumb girl reaction to it, you know? Because I'm always like, well, why aren't there like half monkey people walking around then? Like, it's always that thought process that you go through. Like, well, if we did evolve at one point, 
and science is right on this, and 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 Darwin is correct on this, then there it should be still happening. It there would be should a continuous be the ones loop. Who didn't adapt? Who died? So they're half this absolutely didn't make it to that. Like there should, should be, be a lot. Yeah, and more think about evidence. this. And none. Like we've mutated ourselves to this. Yeah. When was the last time when the doctor comes out of giving birth and says, "Oh, you know, your your new child has a mutation"? When was the last time that was a good thing? Yeah. Never. 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 And the other thing Darwin did is he said it was a simple cell, a simple cell that divided, right? We've all heard of the mm -hmm. simple mm -hmm. cell, but it wasn't simple. And what's crazy is this book actually, you know, somewhere in here, if someone's hot on a computer right now, there's a passage somewhere along the lines of the things of this world are made up of things that cannot be seen. You know, it doesn't make much sense if you're reading it in 1850, okay? Right. Flash forward, you know, so Darwin comes out in 1859 with his, his book, and his, the Illuminati's not dumb, nor is Satan, and he's got all of his people ready, especially T.J. Huxley of the Aldous Huxley family, Illuminati family, and he was known as Darwin's bulldog, and he basically started bullying you know, several in a coordinated fashion across all or enough higher institutions, higher education institutions came out simultaneously saying, this is it, this is it, this is it. And it only took about a hundred years, three generations to get away from that family centered Bible to we've evolved, which now really unshackles our morality. And I mean, it was Darwin ultimately that was the justification for what Hitler did because if Darwin's right, then no one is wrong. Whatever you believe is right for you is right. There is no ultimate mm -hmm. judge. So he comes out and says there's, you know, this simple cell and it divided, which even that by itself, like you're going to tell me that these two things divided and evolved equally, that is female and male, all along the way so they can keep fitting together and continue reproducing all the way to today. So the... Here's why it's statistically impossible. Because we have since, since the 19, late 1980s, we've mapped the human genome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do we learn? There's, there's 15 billion <coughs> lines of code. Yeah. It's information. It, it means there must be a designer. The same way, I mean, and you took, and it's complex too. So if we're told that the earth is, what are they saying these days? The earth is 5 billion years old? They change it every couple decades. They do. They, they change, they change it, all, it every few years. Okay, so think Based about on what they can carbon uh, date. I don't want to get into carbon dating. Which right is now. That's a whole nother retarded to me. Thank you. That is oh. a, Whoa. That is a, uh, that's circular reasoning because they use, I, I, I don't want to get, just, that's a, another conversation. Uh, the correct like, Google, well, is the exploding. Google is uh, 4.543 billion years old. All right, yeah, and it, it'll keep changing. So let's just round it up to five billion, okay? Sure. So we've been around five billion years, or the Earth has. Right. Now let's say the day the Earth was started was the first day that there was a simple cell, all right? Now if you, and it had, unless someone wrote, you know, Microsoft Windows, that's what, about 100 million lines of code? Charles, you might know that. No idea. <laughs> he is an IT specialist. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. So... If you think of it all like this, there would have to be three human mutations per year from the very beginning of time for us to get to what was mapped 20 years ago, a 15 billion line code that makes this up. And the stuff, that, the information that's in there, it's incredible because it's, in each cell, it's the equivalent of a, like a miniature factory. It's got receiving and duplicating technology. It's got... Um, messaging, information portals. It's got electronic uh, impulses coming through it. It sends some cells off that are going to become brain cells. Other cells are going to become your arm. It Does anybody else think that this is absolutely just insulting? That Darwin thought he was right about any of this? Like, it's I just, beyond insulting it's to think that it all happened insulting. by accident. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's beautifully and perfectly and engineered that's, and designed. That's another it thing. Is. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean to. No, you, go for it. I just feel like. Don't mean to call Darwin an idiot. Be, bring it, bring it back. Simplify this down to like this was this was one person's theory, 
And maybe the devil's thought on saying, wow, if we expand this, I can make those idiots believe anything. And then here we go. And that's the, that's the start of the decline of the human being and where we've gotten ourselves to today. And, but I don't think that that's, that's not everybody that I know. There's so much still that does revolve around this book, but there's so much, excuse my language, but there's so much shit well, around uh, I added religion out a and all of the in other the stuff. Jar. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'll, I'll, I might as well start with a 50 in there right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to need to set up a credit. Do you guys take debit? Because, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Let's see, Visa will pay for my swearing now, and then I will pay them back slowly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. With interest, thanks. But uh, it's just, it, like, the, just the thought of that is so, it, it does, it makes me, it makes my blood boil just thinking about it. I'm like, I don't want, when we, we're in such a crappy place right now because nobody believes that human life has any value. And then there, I just, I just read something on my Instagram. It was like, you know, a pregnant woman, uh, only, only if she thinks that that is life or that's a baby is it actually precious and don't even get me started on this think, one then then she can do whatever she wants with it <laughs> in my opinion that's crazy and i know that a lot of people here are like that's just crazy and it's like but that's that's the scope of where we've gotten to today and it's no like, we are right now that's exactly another why thing we are god here right when now. he removes his hand of protection to for nations that practiced the most child sacrifice, which is something that Satan has always required. And if you listen to some of these guys that come out of the Illuminati, and they all echo the same thing. Going back to Darwin, Roger Morneau, who had spent most of his career, he defected out late in life. Mm -hmm. And he even they even talked about the fact that, you know, Darwin was a 33rd degree Freemason, as was his father. Roger Morneau claims, and I'll, I'll, put, a, I'll put a little snippet of them, he claims that Satan himself is the one that gave this doctrine of evolution to Darwin. And then he used, you know, his Illuminati human, because there's a spiritual world and a physical world, and they operate in tandem. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, but this book predicted that in the last days we'd be following these doctrines of demons, and this incredible thing would happen, which is Israel, you know, God's people, Mm -hmm. It would get reformed right as all of this was happening, and this would mark the end of days. So when you're reading like a book like J.C. Ryle writing in like the 1860s, he was this uh, famous uh, you know, theologian slash preacher, mm -hmm. and he wrote a few books. I was reading one of them a couple years back, and it was, I was just blown away because he's writing from, it's like 1860, 1870, and I'll, I'll get the right year when we mm -hmm. put this up. And he's writing about the fact that he's certain, he knows for a fact that the Jews will be regathered in Israel. But then he, he added, he goes, but I'll tell you this, I have no idea how that's going to happen. Because right now they are at the bottom rung of every social ladder in every nation across the world. Uh, this is where my faith, you know, he's writing, this is where faith comes in. I just know it's going to happen. And then you go back and read that. And now we're looking back on history where, it, I mean, I have goosebumps right now. Like... Mm -hmm. That actually, and it wasn't that he just predicted Israel. They predicted unbelievable details, right. uh, right. hundreds of details, mm -hmm. to where you statistically can't have said that. And it's just impossible to predict unless you know something. Yeah. yeah. So this, so the Darwin thing, and I think this, so if we are created, and even like the day I found God, which was, it was, November 22nd of 2011. I'll remember the day forever. It was a moment where I it was like the biggest goosebump attack in history. Like I had, it's hard to say this as a man, but like I almost fainted literally when it finally, yep. like, oh my God, this, this is what this is. And I still then was still trying to reconcile evolution. Oh, so maybe God just guided evolution. Okay. That, <laughs> and, you know, he's just been kicking the it can around it for it a opens billion. Up a lot. Oh, it hurts. It, it, just, it physically hurts. It physically to hurts. Think that everything yeah, it that you thought as a human yeah. being that you knew, yeah. you Almost knew every, is yep. wrong. Yep. I mean, I don't know wrong. about you guys, but I felt stupid. I yeah. did too. Yeah. I sat for a minute. I, I was, was angry like, for so yep. over many like, years. But it, it's where you want to shake yourself and be like, it was that simple. 
But it then was you look at people really this in a whole simple. different sense. And you walk into the grocery store and you're like, you're kind of just looking at people like, what do they think? What do they think? Mm-hmm. Did, they Did they know? Did they know? Do they know they how great it is? Like, I, I used to yell at Jehovah's back, Witnesses. You know? yeah. And now I'm kind of like, oh, you're really passionate about yours. And I kind of understand that now. <laughs> like, you're almost there. And yeah, And okay. Satan, he will counterfeit everything yeah. right up to the – he gets right up to the – I mean, he's even getting behind places like Gaia.com, which – Basically, it's a Christian website, except for oh, yeah. one thing, just one thing. Mm-hmm. They are prepping for this fake alien invasion. So what they're saying, you know, it's the aliens that are coming, and that's who's behind all this. <laughs> right. You just just substitute alien for demon, and Gaia makes complete complete sense. And it's sort of everything ties in, and they mm-hmm. will get people right uh, up to that you edge. You know what's funny? I, now I understand why you told me that, like, Gaia is this. Close. You're like, you're so close. You're very close. You're so close. <laughs> yeah. It w- so if God made us, think about this, and he wants relationship with us, don't you think he created a way for us to communicate with him? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I we still don't know. If, well, I actually think it might be that little know, voice in our head. Although I think it's well, our, narr- our it could, narrator. It takes to that part to figure it out. Like, you have to put in the work to actually figure it out how to communicate. I just remember so being on my knees and, and reading a book. You know what I mean? Like you I read a book. It's the simple thing yeah. that, that Pastor Chris just mapped out for us. Hey, no name, no name dropping. No name dropping. No name dropping. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, that he, he just mapped out for us. And, I, and I, just, I am not good at recalling exactly how he worded it and what it means exactly. I'm going to have to look that up. And, and figure out exactly how he said it to make it to make sense. Like but the you know the the, the the trilogy, we we are the trilogy. We are a part of that. Yeah, we body, have mind, spirit in us at all times. Father, Son, Holy Spirit at yeah. all times. We just don't realize that that's like your every single little thought is being heard, is being monitored. But it it's, it's so I feel like we realize it, but we ignore it. We ignore the thought in our head, and then we get the, the pit in our because stomach, and we ignore the pit in our stomach. And then religion, I think, you know, quote, unquote, the box, mm-hmm. the religion has made us think that we are separate from that. Yes. We are right. separate Everybody from that, and we have, to, we have to get to heaven before we find out whether or not we did things right. That's false. That's Hoo-ha. It has okay, nothing to do crap. with your actions. No. No. You don't go to heaven or that, n- not go to heaven based thing. on no one can do enough good to get into heaven. Nobody. You are no. not punished for your sins. You are punished by your sins here. I yes. You said that a few weeks ago, and that one's been saying And that was, the, that was the direct it quote, is, so you said it, it right. Still, so up top, you, you did my say mind it right. right now. It is. But it does touch some You're punished by your sins? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Because it's. It'll touch us. It makes me think about like, well, people. crap. I'm the one who's who's making me feel like crap right now. Mm-hmm. I am the one doing that. Like, well, see, well that's I, that's like free back, will, sweetie. Back to when we started. That's how I grew up. That's when I felt. When Same. I believed in Catholic something, over here. Too. I was God. Doesn't bring I you was closer. the holder of my body, my world. So if yeah, I you're the Shirley up, MacLaine in that movie. I am yes. God. Oh, I am yes. God. Oh, yes. my, oh my God. Know, I, I spent <laughs> nights on my, you know, just looking up and asking, but it, it, you always thought it would get answered. But you don't. You're young. You move on. You know, and you're always fighting that until it actually is presented in front of you. Until you actually just, you can make all those connections. Then you can start to the, the There's two things I want to say about that, because one is... Sin is it har- It's not. God's not a teetotaler. Okay, He's not saying. He's not saying don't go read tarot cards and crystals and go to soothsayers because <laughs> right. he, he's yeah. just a you know a strict You'll you know yeah here. he's very strict <laughs> principle. <laughs> right. uh, and I've learned this now you know and learned to identify it. But you know when you do that you are and this book's very clear about it. You're letting demon spirits into you mm-hmm. now just don't don't confuse what you see in the movies because that's not real that is not you actually if you're headed for hell you won't know you have a demon you might even have a pretty good life mm-hmm. yeah you'll have an awesome life and i mm-hmm. and i've had some recent experience with some people like i had a friend recently that um you know it said to me that i just went to this tarot card reading and i remember thinking to myself i'm like oh no this is and i this, this be might good. be conceited, but I'm like, this is going <laughs> to blow up in my face. Mm-hmm. Because if you're out talking about 
bringing down Satan's kingdom, he is going to send everyone out. It, it's yeah. going to happen. I mean, if you guys it's gonna stick around, it's You're gonna, opening up a window. Stuff's going to get hot. Saying, hey, come on in. Yeah. People come on are going to start <laughs> acting very – the world will hate you. Like, I, mm -hmm. very hard to – I'm trying to get my arms around that one, but – so here's the second thing, and this is a little personal theory because I'm – I'm a Ephesians 5.11 big time believer. You guys, anyone know that one offhand? <laughs> no, sorry. Not completely. Do not opinion. participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but rather uncover them. And for whatever reason, maybe because I was like a, a sneaky bastard growing up, I get how Satan operates. I just, I just get it. Get I just get sure. it. That's how I am, though. Anytime that my friends tell me that they're going to a psychic or... Oh, I just want to talk to my dad, and he's passed. My no, dad, my dad passed years ago, and you're talking to I would feel the talk that to knew him. your dad. It's a familiar spirit. Exactly, I feel that's like this is somebody who's bad that knows everything. And uh, I had went and saw one after my dad died, and knew the nickname. And there, that look, only my dad called me. There's and my real, husband, and that's how they. And I said, you know what? This is horrific. This gives me a sick feeling. And not a good, sick feeling. Not like my dad would give me. I'm going to have been God spirit in I'm you going. I'm going to go ahead and walk away. Right. And I try to well, warn right. every person that I know about it because it opens a door. Pulling you away from that, like, that's not what you want. That's not where mm -hmm. you want to go. And that's not the answers you're going to get from that. So you guys know, we've all heard what the third eye is, correct? Mm -hmm. what, what's the third eye? The, well, the pineal, pineal gland. gland. Okay. Yeah. So... We've now been able to measure that this little miniature organ that's essentially in the center of our brain, mm -hmm. okay? And again, Eastern philosophy, it can, it's, there's, it's very close to what is said in the Bible, which is God is going to, he's going to have a relation with you, going to com communicate with you. And as, uh, you know, Eastern philosophy got very close. They talk about it as the third eye, the spiritual eye, and they're into all the chakras and yada, 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 yada. Very close to what God had to say, but not, not quite far enough. And now we've been able to identify the fact that the pineal gland actually receives and transmits waves, information. Information. Okay? Right. So you tie in all these ugly conspiracies that are going on, which at the end of the day, I, I believe the vast majority of them where there is a conspiracy, by and large, not, not all the time, but by and large... You, this is a little peek behind the curtain of Satan's operation. And you find out, you guys know how there's like fluoride in our water and it's yeah. Oh, yeah. like such a problem? Yeah. Well, it doesn't just make us dumber, and we are dumber than ever. But you know what it does? A little it's byproduct? It creates a plaque that builds up around your pineal gland. And it's like literally, it's like putting a wet blanket over a radio it stifles the connection. And I think, I think you know, when Satan does something, because we sh there shouldn't be fluoride in our water. I mean, it's rat poison. If there's anything, I could see putting minerals in our water. Why have there been 12,000 court cases in local townships all across the United States, funded by whom, to make sure fluoride gets in our water? That, to me, sounds like the devil. I have made a conscious effort in the last, like, let's say, let's say the last two months to not drink anything other than purified water. And I have been experiencing you're getting smart. a flood mm -hmm. of emotion. You guys, are, you guys are opening me up like, to, like, food, water, this. I, I'm all over God, it. God talks like, to no. me through my gut and my heart more down. than he does through my mentality and things yeah. of that nature. Because, I like, I don't know. Maybe I am um, unstifling the, the pineal gland and, and, you know, opening up a little bit more. I don't know. It's just, it's just uh, being a little bit more conscious and aware of, like, oh, this is – this is the temple. This is what I use to connect with people and God. Right. I am me. I live right here. I live here. So but I have to take like care of this. Born, you're issued a blanket to go over that so you don't figure out stuff, so you don't see it, so we can't go that far. Nobody can open Yeah, well, what God said, he said, sheltered. Yeah. Jesus wrote that the God of this world, now that's not Jesus and God. The God of this world is Satan yeah. until Jesus comes back. Yeah. Now, Jesus essentially won the court case at the crucifixion, the deeds in his name, but we haven't had the, you know, the guy's been convicted, but he hasn't been sentenced yet, okay? okay. 
And And right now, he's running the prison that we were born into, literally. So I was going to go somewhere with that, with um, the fluoride, the connection with God. I don't know. It must have been a really great point. I'm sure it was. I had a coughing fit and had to walk away, so I didn't didn't, even help you. Oh, the temple, what you put in it. Yeah. That's what it was. So you know how everyone's fasting in this book all the time? Yeah. All the time. Okay. And I was just like, why would God make you go without food? I mean, this is back when I was like, okay, I can't drink. I can't have sex. I mean, what's the point I'm of living, man? I'm this not doing it. I'm not doing it. Because it strengthens your connection with. Mm-hmm. Well, you start to, and this is what, this is what I find so fascinating. Because you can go find online communities or activists that are fighting fluoride in water. You know, these very diehard people that are, yep. they know for They're a right. fact we're getting poison. Yep. And then there's another camp. And not without not that much crossover where GMO foods, the poison in our foods, Cereal, this is the vaccinations know, are. Kids, yeah. So I don't know if you guys have ever done a fast. I've done a few of these. You do a fast for three. The closest I got was almost three days. It was on 60 some hours. Oh, I did. Week. Dude, I, did I seven. felt I, did I did never yeah. felt yeah. seven better. Seven? Seven yeah. days. Seven. Juice cleanse, wow. seven days. Oh, no. I did literally nothing but water. But water? For four days. Okay, five. But five do you, the longest you're, you're, you're I've gone even, on just nothing but water. You're not hungry after like the second day. You get no. into like a zone. It's un... Mm-hmm. And then you go read the science behind it, and the body has this one... Here, again. Oh, we have I this... I don't fast. I just take peyote, go around. No, you do not. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. Oh, my goodness. That's basically no, what he you does do, not. your brain is going to go... And I mean, yes, it might open up something. You might go, you know, think differently, feel differently, whatever, but... You're just more in tune to your body and your you surroundings will, but and first, everything. But, but the everything. transition phase of when you get there, you're going to break. You either make or break at that point. Mm-hmm. You know? And some people see it, some people don't. People kept asking me, they're like, I, because I did this during my normal everyday routine I of could, life, I was ahead. going to work during this. And I specifically did this while I was going to work because I was mm-hmm. at work for 10 hours a day. Crazy. And I was like, I'm busy. I ain't got. I don't need to even think about food. There was no food around us. You either brought your lunch or you left to go get something. And I was like, I didn't think about it. And people, are you, are you okay? What are you doing? And and I'm type two yeah, diabetic. Yeah, we and are brainwashed to believe that the key to health is shut. On this planet, will yeah. tell you, <gasps> you can't go more than five hours yeah. without eating. I'm like, yeah. well, watch this. Actually, hold my beer. The science <laughs> yeah. is is starting to uh, trickle down to your ground level doctors because even my doctor uh, i took myself off another medication recently and mm. i feel i'm amazing because I'm, of it. but I'm there's a reason they call it a practice thing. there's a reason they call yeah. it a practice right. and look and all there's doctors that. know is what they were taught mm-hmm. and, and you know What's if you went to college all you know is what your teachers taught you don't right. go there to open your mind no if you really think about it they hand you a syllabus mm-hmm. everyone has to read the exact same stuff what they're really doing is actually building a box yeah. Everybody get information think. and do what I tell you yeah. to do and go spread the knowledge of what I told to you to do. This. And that's another. It's the, just like me. The last day. Person, you just learned something from the Bible and you just met your friend. And you're like, let me explain something to you. It's yeah. the same thing. But it's same not thing. looked at the same as when you go to college or no. when you go to learn something from a teacher or anything like that. It's, it's looked at very well. Well, the science behind it now that we can, we're now measuring this is that. Your body does this incredible thing when you stop stuffing food into it. Right. It starts drawing energy from itself. Mm-hmm. And the first place it goes, it starts gobbling up all of the, the broken cells, all of your damaged material. Mm-hmm. And it literally feeds off. That's the first thing that goes. And it only takes like 48 hours. And For the toxic to be done. It's like right. 48, 72? Seven, I think yeah, you know, I, good question. Good question. Like I'll, that, I'll yeah. attach yeah. something that talks about the science well, behind it. <laughs> but here again, what a what an unbelievable machine this is. Crazy. And, it, and to think we that no it, was by it would be much easier for me to walk away from my garage and come back in a billion years and find a family of working Mercedes Benzes <laughs> than <laughs> what we have here. Yeah. Right. And there's only, there's only four possibilities. I mean, there's no, really only two possibilities. We, we either evolved or we were created, right? Mm-hmm. Is there another possibility? No. Charles, you're good at being devil's advocate. Did is we, there, how did life get here? Did we come from another planet? Well, there, then the question still Ooh. exists. 
did we evolve or we evolve created that. on that other planet. Right. 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 It's so yeah, it's at the, the end question. of the day, there's only two possible. We either yeah. we evolved. And how did you get to that other planet? Right. right. So we either evolved Don't get or lost created. Don't get <laughs> Evolved <laughs> or created. There's, a, there's and only some two people, options. Oh, well, maybe the aliens dropped us off. Okay. We were well, still then how did the aliens get here? We were still evolved from them then. I still wonder why the government does not pull the pyramids up. Like, what is underneath the pyramids? You're going, oh, you're, they're, you're, you're, you're they're going active. That one. Thing, you're like, going into a whole. That, it's like, I, it's always that's a whole show. Mind. That's, all, that, I mean, I that's like three it's shows. So that's crazy. like that's three that's shows. Three or four shows. shows. I mean, there are people that actually involved. believe the pyramids are burial tombs. <laughs> burial tombs. <laughs> that's so they're just burial tombs. They're just they're just tombstones, Melissa. And the who is the Iraqi guy? He's famous on television. Who's he's the the expert that always talks oh, about I, the I, I, I make sure to not watch current news And this is how they television. do it. They get Richard yeah. Dawkins Crazy and Bill Nye guy. and Michio <laughs> Kaku. And who is the uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson? Those are the four big scientists in the world. That's who's on the news. And they're all bought and paid for Illuminati mm-hmm. members. Oh. And what's crazy is it's hard to watch. the real science – like real scientists that take their profession to the nth degree, and I don't care if it's biology, I don't care if it's philosophy or history or archaeology, they always end up in the same place, which is, oh, my God, God is real. Is, yeah. And we're going to hear from four guys or about four guys that went through that very thing. These four guys are, in a sense, very special to me. Oh, I, I looked into them, too, and it's kind of amazing. Any... uh. We're going to hold that thought. Any last thoughts ab- while we move out of this uh, unplanned evolution <laughs> talk? So many thoughts, oh my God. but none that we can So what did you tell me about, what did you find out? Can anyone name the four guys that were on that the photograph of this show? <laughs> no. By name. I'm the worst at this. I'm I so don't sorry. know names. No. I just know that, like, when we were going Ooh, into this show, I had looked at what oh you had guy. sent us and was kind of like, how can that many people say the exact same? From I feel like we've been warned oh from God, the very so many. beginning. But so much who the controls, always warned. Who but controls we the media? Ignore it. Exactly. And it's not just four Devil. guys in the world that are showing you this. No, no, no. There, there is a million. Or a billion but in the U.S. That are walking around with this information. Right. And they have no idea. But we're brainwashed into being so embarrassed about even talking about because it. Because then we're conspiracy theorists. Theorists and right. they sound crazy, but Darwin's theory doesn't sound crazy to anybody, and it's still a theory. So well, why can't I have a theory? <laughs> yeah, stay close. Stay close to the mic. You, know Chill, I mean? you gotta stay close to the microphone. But you're 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 exactly right. They're, but they can but go door to door, but we cannot just exploit this. We can though. We can well, though, but we well, we've, look, we've we, been conditioned yeah. to think that we're crazy we're and that we shouldn't and say what we want to say because this is also the illusion right, right. that is supposed to be in play right now, but uh, in 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 all reality, there are more people like regular Joes like you and me who actually know the truth mm-hmm. and believe this and we're just labeled. Yep. There's more matter. than it's you okay. know, but at the end of the day, it is it is well under half the population. I mean, the, God said the road to heaven is very narrow. If you, if you and your buddies think you're, you're not saved by your church, you're not saved because you're famous or you're funny, Mm-mm. you're not saved by your friends, you're not saved because you do a lot of good deeds. That has nothing to do with it. Um, man, my up, brain is just going. I wake up every day just thankful like for this. Welcome to every fact. conversation when me and Melissa are together. Like I wake up every day awesome. with the simple <laughs> fact that I am I am I have enough brains to have gotten here and, and understand some of this and and the heart to have been called back, you know, to God. I, I wake up literally every day, and as soon as my feet well, hit the floor, I temple. say thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You carry I say your thank temple, you yeah. take care of your temple, and you move forward. Because you if do what you anything do. else, like Be you happy. said, like how much of the population doesn't have any clue about this, and they just believe whatever is on CNN? Barna did a survey a few years ago basically saying it. it it's uh, – the survey was of – it was a good-sized survey, like 10,000 people mm-hmm. or, or whatever – Whatever makes for a, I don't remember the exact number, mm-hmm. but they had come to the conclusion that if the Bible is true, if this book is true, that 7% of the population are saved. Currently. Wow. That that's, you know. The world population. Yeah, world population. But 7%. you go and you, 
that same Barna group also did a survey where they went around and they also asked a lot of questions of these people. Do you believe there's a heaven and a hell? And it's like 98% believe there's a heaven. Uh, much fewer believe there's a hell. <laughs> um, and most people believe they're going there. Something like 90% of the population believes they're going to heaven. That's kind of arrogant. Um, well, I get it because I was there. I'm like, I used to think, oh, well, I'm a good person. Never understanding what this really was about. Oh, see, I never thought I was going until currently. I oh, never God, thought I, I was I still going. don't. I still am not sure and I, and, I do, and I still question I've, it to this day. I do, too. I mean, you're supposed to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And I went through oh, yeah. several years. Oh, I am, mm -hmm. but this I am book, just getting to the fear and trembling. Yeah. Talking about yeah, exactly. most of the world being so far off on what the truth of life is. Another prediction in here is... In the last days, people will be following these doctrines of demons. The people will think they are wise, but essentially they are dumber than any generation that has ever existed. And but we maybe, are. But maybe that's We're why, dumb, though, so. is too many people are scared of the, the scary part. Because we don't want to talk about the scary part, right? Nobody ever wants to talk about, you don't the, want scary to talk about the scary part. But, I'm, uh, but I also have to accept the fact that I strayed for so long mm -hmm. just to thumb my nose at him and say, well, I watch this. I'm, you can't do anything to me. Now I'm going, I am going to pay a price for that in some way, shape, or form. But little and did you know, the whole okay. time he was kind of like this, the whole time, that's like, oh, you're right. such a dick. Like, <laughs> yeah. Right. But right. He's a long-range planner. He there's yeah. so mm -hmm. much in that that it's like um, I, have to, I have to constantly remind myself that my, like, God is in control. And my reward is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Totally. I can, I can withstand whatever he needs me to go through here because this physical body doesn't really, I mean, it matters, but it doesn't really matter. I know. That's, the, that's where all it my troubles matter. just went away as I suddenly realized, oh, my God, this, like, I just turned 50. Oh, and people, I'm just like, yeah. oh, you know, this life go by. It's, so fa it's a wisp. Mm -hmm. But now I, it's not I think. It's not an I hope. It's a I know. It's a it's an I know, and I will, I will not refute this to death. I mean, I think I'm going to be one of those guys in a FEMA camp getting my head chopped off because I will never refute Freedom. what's in this book. Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. Or like the girl, the girl with like the Columbine shoe that would not say that there was no God. Yeah. You know, like I, I feel like if I was put in that situation at this point in my life, I, I would not refute. Ten well, years ago, take whatever you want. I may me. have selfishly been like, nope. Oh, God, I'm 10 good. years ago? I mean, the, this book I mean, talks five about... five years ago, if we're going to be honest. Right. <laughs> Revelation, uh, what is it, 13, 16 to 17? I think I actually have it in here because there's going to be this mark of the beast. And if you saw last night's episode, you know we're going to talk about some of this. You know that these guys are planning to enslave the world. And if, you, if you're up on topics, you know that we've got... Hundreds of FEMA camps. They can I was house say, about, but it's already happening. 20, like, no, that's what people don't realize. They're so scared of the bad, but the bad's already happening. If you stick We're your watching it happen. Ignorance right is now. bliss. Dot dot dot. Temporarily, mm -hmm. only yeah. temporarily. And you can even. I freaked out when, I mean, I've seen some of these camps. They're they're very freaking real. And then you see the purchase orders and the other guys that work at them that work at Homeland Security and they're photographing the fact that the U.S. government ordered 20,000 guillotines about 15 years mm -hmm. ago. Yep. And all of these things are stocked. And here, this book said, in the last days, after Israel's regathered, there's going to be this time of trouble like there's never been in the world. It's going to be Hitler times a 1,000. I told my husband that if we do not see it in our lifetime, our children will 100% see it in theirs. Totally. Oh, yeah. My son knows. I mean, he has been... I'm. It's not brainwashing because it's the truth. But and I hope that I'm still goddess. here for my children when that happens. However, like I'm confident that, that is I, my, my kids know better. His soul is my biggest fear in this Absolutely. world. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Because it's he's indoctrinated at school. Then I got to deprogram him there. Yep. I mean, <laughs> I'm sitting here looking at these Disney books. Again, Disney. Man, they're mm -hmm. very evil. Disney. And they're talking about I'm in his classroom and – all these dinosaur books are in there. I'm just like, man, by the time you're out of first grade, you're into this five billion years we evolved from. We made it through, though. And, 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 and your, your faith in, in the Lord is, is and I do. as important. They'll as, always come back. I came back. you are the most important. Oh, God, I could have a, an entire 
sh episode based on just the relationships between men and women and why mm -hmm. you are the most important thing in him um, having a saved soul in his adult life. Oh, I think the father is always ultimately responsible for the souls the of their children. Girls yes. responsible for whatever. everything. We, we were made of you. Absolutely, that is the one father of the is in now, charge of that. We do get, and that is why it is harder to be a man than it is to be a woman. Possibly not to like pull and from yeah, you, right. possibly, one conversation to another, but it's equally as well, hard. I, I, and I believe that men are here to lead women because absolutely you see all of this. But in a very non handmaid's right tale kind of way. But no, I don't, don't know like there are about some that topics. And I don't want to know don't run with that. that. There's <laughs> enough to talk about where yeah. I try to avoid, yeah. maybe because I'm a, just a pussy or a wussy. <laughs> Sorry, people. Uh, I try to avoid the homosexual, the um, abortion, the uh, man versus woman wearing pants. Yeah. And Absolutely. These are such hot buttons. I also put flat earth in there, too. And I'm dividing. I don't know exactly what the shape of this How place is. How come nobody is. ever talks about flat Ooh. Mars theory? Ooh. Like, all of a sudden, I want to be best friends. <laughs> like, this just registered a little bit. Since I heard it, I was like, whoa. But have you ever seen Mars? No. Now, what have you no. seen? I it looks like a it. tiny little speck in the sky. You know Allegedly. You I don't know it's Mars. Mars. Yeah, you nope. don't know. Well, I was the Bible, told it was Mars. You can't prove it. I was told it was Mars. I was told that they yeah. were stars. I was told sure. that it was this. But it's something that, like, Look, I we get don't understand the stars. About. I mean, no. what are we up to now? 95% dark matter? <laughs> you know why that number keeps growing? Because all these scientists that are raised on the idea that gravity is the most power, you know, is what keeps this planet in... Or please, gravity. So an astronaut gets 60 miles outside of our atmosphere, and all of a sudden there's no gravity between nope, here none. and the sun. You can float. <laughs> but it keeps the Earth really in this thing that has a surface temperature of 5,000 degrees, yeah, heats us 93 million. <laughs> really? Yeah, doesn't that make really? sense to you? That doesn't make sense to you. Come on. Well, come on. Come Just on. Just look. Yeah. Say very possibly Satan didn't start with Darwin. He might have started with Copernicus. 500 years before then. He started well, way it's before just like that. High but it's, it's high school relationships, though, too. One person says one thing, and then it gets believed and carried on. Like but gossip. as adults, we think that it stops as adults. And that no. we can believe everything that adults tell us because they're no, true, right? they're just fooled children no, that grew up. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And their parents you know, were fooled are. and that blah, 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 blah. Absolutely. At 50 years old. Oh, because absolutely. If you do good, we're taught you do good, you get good. Mm hmm. We're just children. We can, we're going to go past through, you can live to 104. Oh, I child. think we're children until the day we well, die. Yeah, we're still Absolutely. Because we're just. All right, let's, we got to get into our topic or. Um, oh, we're still on an introduction. Or there's going to be trouble. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, these four faces, uh, the crowd can't see it right now, but in the upper left hand corner is a guy named Bill Cooper. He was not, The reason I picked these four, and I could have picked from hundreds, I'm sorry, thousands, tens of thousands throughout history. These are, uh, I identify with these guys. Two of these guys were in the upper levels of our intelligence agencies, and two of these guys were super famous Hollywood guys. They all left cushy lives to do what we do here today, which is to talk about the truth, and one to possibly three, two of them certainly were killed by the Illuminati or, you know, Satan's henchmen. Because they knew too much. Because they were doing too well. Yeah. Yeah. Upper left-hand corner is Bill Cooper. He was with the Office of Naval Intelligence. We'll, we're going to do his backstory in a minute. Um, if you go to the right, that is a film director by the name of Myron Fagan. He was a huge director from about 1907 through the 1950s, 60s. He stumbled upon to a st satanic plot. He was directing guys like Humphrey Bogart and uh, the biggest names of the day. Bottom left-hand corner is another Hollywood guy. That's Aaron Russo. He, uh, you know his work. He's done uh, the movie like The Rose. He did Trading Places with Eddie Murphy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seen these two guys, yeah. And then in the bottom right-hand corner is a man named Ted Gunderson, who was... This isn't some small-time guy. He was the no, chief agent in charge of the Los Angeles field office of the FBI. He had 700 agents below him. And at one point, he was one of three men that were up for the directorship of the FBI. And you can go back to the longest-standing director of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, who went out of his way in his last days to say, you guys, 
there's a quote somewhere that we are up against the same conspiracy that was at work 2,000 years ago when Jesus was here. And he, go, and he goes on to say, the conspiracy is so big, it boggles the mind. Now, this was the director of the FBI saying this in 1957 after he'd been director, and I think he became director in, what, 1927, so 27 years later. So I think it can happen to presidents. I think John F. Kennedy figured this out in office. In fact, some of the letters that he had going back and forth between his lover, Mary Pinchot Meyer, and those letters sold a few years ago at auction mm -hmm. for like 90000 bucks. Yeah, crazy. And she's talking to Timothy Leary of LSD fame, Harvard professor. And in the weeks before Kennedy was shot, she was freaking out, calling Timothy Leary, saying they're going to kill him. They're ki going to kill him. He's waking up too fast. He's starting to figure out what he's really involved in. And this is in Timothy Leary's book. The, the, these stories, so it doesn't matter if you're president, head of the FBI, a famous movie producer, or just a regular business dude. Right. This can happen to anyone. And when it happens, it changes your life. Changes the course. Because you know, right. you don't change, you, you're not going to make right. more friends doing this, <laughs> talking about this. <laughs> no. You're no. not going to be popular. No. It is not going to help <laughs> your social standing. You can lose your pension. You can lose a, your friends, family. You can even lose your home. life. So people don't do this based on a hope or a whim. you got to be in that, I know. <laughs> Otherwise, and that's why I love these guys' story. So which one do you guys want to learn about first? Ooh, let's do... Intelligence agencies or Hollywood? I, Katie, go, oh, Melissa, you pick. I'm going intelligence agencies because I know enough about Hollywood already. Uh, yeah, about. I'm over right. Hollywood. Let's yeah, go with intelligence maybe. agencies. I don't know. Maybe not. Okay, why don't we start with... Uh, what time do we have, Al? About 30 All right, today's tagline, do your beliefs determine what you know or does what you know determine your beliefs? Big difference. All right, so let's start with, um, oh, and our quote of the day is from, we'll start with William Cooper then. Okay. Because he said these words, William Cooper, this quote doesn't seem like much, but the backstory behind the quote is what's fascinating. William Cooper was an intelligence officer for the Navy. He was a lifelong military man. And he saw something when he was on a sub that he couldn't explain, this massive ship coming out of the water. He then, he kept that inside. He followed his security protocols. He didn't share anything. He started to do his own personal digging. And after several years, he went public with it. He identified that there is an Illuminati these people do want to enslave the world. At first, he thought he was looking at real aliens. He later then, near the end of his career, said, these are demons posing as aliens. And I actually got upset with him when I first heard that. I was already saved, but I actually thought there really were aliens. And I still thought there was evolution. It took a while for me to figure out those are all BS. Oh, you're very, like, you're anti-alien? Um, Just, like, fun fact. I am anti, I mean... I'm not homophobic, and I'm not alien-phobic either. <laughs> I just don't think we are visited by alien little green phobic. men from I another planet. I, I love alien I think Satan's first lie might have been with Copernicus, because we can't have a staged alien invasion. I mean, if we're going to have one, we need to be a little ball in space with a lot of other little balls in space so those people can come to us. Mm. But if we're like some, you know, non-round, flat... if, if if the truth of our reality is just so far from what the masses believe it is today, we're certainly primed for what this book says, the greatest deception in human history is on its way within a generation of the reestablishment of Israel. Now, we're coming up on that anniversary, depending on how you look at it. It's, it's either 70 years from 1948 or 70 years from 1967. Either way, it is something I think we're, we're going to see in our lifetimes. Yes. And when you see the underworkings of what's really going on. So Bill Cooper was someone that he stumbled onto this massive conspiracy, just like Ted Gunderson, just like thousands of others have. Mm -hmm. And this quote came, he had a radio show called Hour of the Time, H-O-T-T. And he was on the radio long before, like, he was the original conspiracy theorist, you know, the Modern day, maybe, actually, I take that back. That would have been Jim Garrison, 
the JFK prosecutor who t put Clay Shaw on trial. Um, this guy would have grabbed his baton. He was very early, and he was yeah. saying it when this just mm -hmm. sounded crazy. So this came from a broadcast that was, what was the date of it? June, it was June 28th of 2001, and he was on fire. And you can go back on the, online and hear these broadcasts because he's like, he's like, oh, CNN just did an interview with Osama bin Laden, and CNN's Peter Arnett just came out and said, Osama bin Laden's going to attack the United States in the next few weeks. And he's, he just lived angry, calling everyone sheeple. He's like, if you fall for this, I'm going to use his words, all right? Mm -hmm. If you fall for this bullshit, you are the stupidest American, blah, blah, blah. He, and I, rightfully so. He was angry. So, well, I know before I attack somebody, I let them know that I'm going to do it for sure. <laughs> well, you can't really attack <laughs> through a microphone, but insert, I know what you're saying. Insert sarcasm. Yeah. yeah. So this is 76 <laughs> days before 9-11. He's like, whatever they're going to do that they're going to blame on Osama bin Laden, don't you even believe it. Those were his literal right. words. Because he had, through his own, he actually, after he left the military, he continued in intelligence, and he built up the largest private intelligence agency on the planet or on the plane or whatever it is that we're on. For a while, it was the largest, Veritas. You can look it up. And he, he knew that this false flag was coming. Now, this was 76 days before 9-11. So this is 2001. Now, Osama bin Laden had been on the FBI's most wanted list since 1999, since the Nairobi bombing in Kenya. And they had 300 agents working on finding Osama bin Laden because he's a threat to, um, to, to, um, to America. This a guy that used to be a CIA agent. Uh, what was his CIA name? Tim Rothman, I think. <laughs> Maybe you can figure out uh, Obama's. If you're and he's like, don't even fight. And, of course, after 9-11, the only plane allowed to leave the United States was what plane? The, the bin Laden mm -hmm. family. And who were they meeting with? The Bushes. Hmm, how funny. Mm -hmm. Flashback to Reagan's shooting in 1981, I believe. Mm -hmm. Here again, who were the Bushes meeting with the day before? What would have been the second biggest day in American history, Reagan's assassination, the Bushes were meeting with the Hinckley family. Now, it just happened that that was an unsuccessful assassination attempt. But if it had been... The Bushes would have been involved in JFK, the Reagan assassination, and 9-11 intimately. Three biggest days that it changed the course of history every time? No way. I'm sorry. So Cooper points out the fact that you're going to tell me this Peter Arnett from CNN can go get an interview with Osama bin Laden in his secret hideout, you know, <laughs> at his secret cave. But the FBI, they, you know, with all the tracking and satellites, they can't find him. He's like, don't you even believe this boy? 76 th days later, 9-11 happens. Six weeks after that. And what's tragic, although I believe he's in heaven, we're going to see him in heaven, is that he even said on the air, he goes, my people, my fate is sealed. He knew he was going to be killed. And who was it? Federal agents came. They raided his home. It was in December of 2001, and they shot him in the back, no less. And the very cops that were behind it, there was the Arizona sheriffs, and they also had, I don't know, it was a, there were more than one federal agency. I mean, this was, this was like a massive takedown because he was considered well, so dangerous. Kid Rock had the guy that actually shot Osama bin Laden do, what is it, uh, Kid Rock's cruise or whatever, and he had the guy there talking about it. Well. That's not a real guy. Uh, yeah, no, and we know that. Yeah, it was fact, just so crazy to so see it so, like, Hollywoodized. It, it was. Like, it's it normal. Was. Like, oh, yeah, this uh, is the guy that took down Bin Laden. He's at my concert. Bin Laden died. Because that guy has nothing better to do but be at Kid Rock's concert. But we've grown up with movies and TV shows and news what we broadcasts yeah, where, yeah. where this becomes believable. Yeah. It becomes believable that we found a secret hideout in a deep, dark cave and... Yeah, and now I remember the night Obama came out, said we just got bin Laden. Everyone mm -hmm. celebrates. I don't know if it was that night or in, in the days after, but days someone after let it that. slip that SEAL Team 6 did this. Yep. yep. And I remember turning to uh, Betsy at the time, and I'm just like, because I already knew bin Laden was dead. I'd already, 9-11 mm -hmm. was now ancient history, and I was now right. chasing God, the devil, whatever. And I'm like, watch, all SEAL Team 6 will be dead, all of them. 
And she's like, oh, Dave, you're such a conspiracy theorist. And how many are dead, Dave? All of them. Oh. And how did it happen? I mean, these are the best trained marksmen. <laughs> Two of them died at a gun range. Okay, that's just kind of crazy. One was stabbed in a parking lot. They got the bulk of 23 of them that switched to an old-fashioned Vietnam Chinook instead of their, you know, high uh, uh, with uh, all the mechanisms that keep them safe. They landed in a hot zone. There had been faxes sent to the enemy, the Taliban, saying that the team that killed Osama bin Laden is going to be landing in this beat-up Chinook. And these guys, 20, they were all gunned down. The government said that, uh, you know, it was this horrible accident and, and, you know, there was fire and there was, you know, no wreckage. Yet one of the guys that was on SEAL Team 6 on his cell phone, he's like, Dad, we're in a firefight. Something happened. He was alive at that moment. He was alive at that moment. And here again, the same with 9-11. Who is it that's pushing for the real truth? Because the SEAL Team 6 parents... You hear what they – you see their tear-filled conferences where they're like, my son was murdered. The government, whatever they're saying is a lie because they're saying he died in this helicopter. He was a lie. He sent me photographs of his SEAL team group in a firefight. But what's the easiest way to make her sound crazy is you label her a conspiracy theorist, Mm -hmm. and now she's crazy. Mm -hmm. She's a loon. You can lose some friends that way. You will. Facts. <laughs> Here's jabs. Cooper's quote from that same uh, from the same broadcast. He said, "Be prepared for a major attack, but it won't be Osama bin Laden. It will be those behind the new world order. Whatever it is that they are going to blame on Osama bin Laden, don't you even believe it?" He later on, uh, yeah, let's do both of these. He later on, because at first. You guys have probably run across people that think, oh, there's this Zionist Jewish conspiracy. You know, the Jews are trying to subvert the world. Okay. You got to stop thinking, people. Stop thinking along (laughs) national borders. That is not what your warfare looks like. Mm -hmm. You're in the, you're in, you're playing checkers against a master chess player. Mm -hmm. So he figured this out later in life and he was being interviewed in this Atlanta hotel. And I think it was like, well, 1992. Talking about the book of Revelation, he said, either these men, the Illuminati, are following the book of Revelation and bringing the prophecies in there to pass, to manipulate and control people, or there really is a God, and what he said is going to pass. What he said is going to come to pass is going to come to pass. And this was his comment about, because I, especially with the 9-11 work I do, and now we've got this movie that's starting to heat up. And I've got every anti-Zionist coming out of the woods going, you, you are going to say the Jews did it, right? You are going to – no, I am not going to say that. You, you are – deceived yourself with all due respect. Again, they want to get you close. And, yes, you Stop can going tie backwards it – when I'm trying to go forward. Right. You can tie it to Zionism. You can. Because the people that are behind the Illuminati, they're Jewish on the outside. They're the Rothschilds, they, they're Jewish on the outside. This is – you can trace them all the way back to the days of Jesus, Revelation 2, 9 and 3, 9. He referred to the synagogue of Satan. They were the money changers that would secretly praise Lucifer in private, but in public they're going to appear to be Jews. And so it's not – so this now – you can start to understand how these guys financed both the Nazis and the Allies in World War II. And they were the ones that were behind the Holocaust – I think if Satan's always trying to bring God down. If he can prove him a liar one time, and I think he wins. He got to within eight people before he, God flooded the world. And I think Satan's plan was to execute every Jew by the end of World War II so there would be no Jews left to regather the nation yeah. too. Absolutely. Didn't work out. Cooper's comment, <laughs> it's not the Jews subverting the world. It's not the Catholics. It's not the blacks. It's these men who belong to the ancient mystery schools who meet in secret, decide the fate of the world. And they belong to all different races and all different nationalities and all different religions to the public's, from the public's point of view. But in secret, it is a different story. And uh, good advice for anyone also from Cooper. Listen to everyone, read everything, and believe nothing unless you can prove it with your own research. And I could not back that up anymore now. No, no truer words have ever been spoken. Yeah. I've, I've never actually read that quote. That's no, that is, that is amazing. Yeah. Let's stay in intelligence. Ted Gunderson. Okay. Okay? We might have to break that. Now, 
Like I said, he was real. This is him on the left meeting Reagan. He would later be considered for a position as the chief of the FBI. Uh, he's mixing, you know, he is in the circles of power with the most powerful people in the world. And I, I'm glad you picked this because here's how he figured out something was up. This guy's got a good life. I mean, he's an FBI guy, right? That's my, you know, that was one of my dreams. FBI agent, movie oh, yeah. star, astronaut, right? Mm -hmm. Right? I think it's everybody's dream growing. So <laughs> he, he's not going to throw that away unless he is bloody certain. So FBI, he's got access to murder scenes, interstate crime. And he starts to notice that there's this pattern <coughs> that is never brought out to the public where all these murder scenes are satanic crimes with satanic writing, satanic rituals. And he's starting to wonder, well, why didn't they ever mention the, the Satanism here or the fact that it's like policemen are – they're taught to never bring it up to, quote, unquote, not scare the public. Right. He starts his own investigation while he's at the FBI. Now, you know what that's going to do to his career because at the end of the day, these people, they're still in power. I'm going to read you the quote, and then tell me if there's a name out of the news in the last week that pops to mind. Here's his quote. <laughs> The Finders is a CIA front established in the 1960s. It has top clearance and protection in its assigned task of kidnapping and torture programming young children throughout the U.S. Members are specially trained government kidnappers known to be sexual degenerates who involve the kidnapped children in satanic sex orgies and bloody rituals as well as the murder of other children and slaughter of animals. They use a fleet of unmarked vans to grab targeted children from parks and schoolyards. In doing so, they use children with their organizations as decoys to attract the victims close to the vans where they are grabbed by the adult CIA guys. They then drug the children and transport them in a series of safe houses for safekeeping. They are then used in their ceremonies for body parts, sex slaves, and some are auctioned off at various locations in Northern Hemisphere. Gruesome. Mm. Now, this, this to me almost proves the devil must be real if Absolutely. this is going on. But didn't something that this just come up to yeah. fruition not that long ago? Oh, Somebody this that had a private jet and was Jeffrey doing Epstein. something? Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, <gasps> and yeah, he's – and I put him – I put this quote because there's so many quotes like you could get from Gunderson. But this is how he figured it out. He used his connections to – I mean, these are some scary things. I'm so desensitized to it, I, I probably – I'm not trying to be insensitive to you guys. No, I feel like I, I, I'm heavily desensitized as well, just because of what I watch and what I force him to watch as you're well. Just, and I'm like, this is a thing. Watch it. When you take it in, you, you're going to get that. It took me a few years. It was, I but as a parent, I think you can only be so much yeah. desensitized before. You're, that's where I rely on faith. still lazy in you. My son is in yeah, God's yeah, hands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Period. Period. And my son knows God. Yeah. It doesn't mean he won't, you know, get picked up by a van someday or won't run into trouble someday. Mm. But keep your eye on the big prize. Right. Which Absolutely. is eternal life. Absolutely. Not the physical life. Yep. So this guy starts looking into it and he finds out, holy cow, there is this massive network of child molesters that – are out there that are kidnapping kids. And you tie that into how many children go missing every year in the United States? Do you guys know? 800,000. Uh, but the White House, don't mind but what they're worried about is getting rainbow colors on the White House. Right. What we're talking about is, yeah. is a few immigrants at a border. Right. See, in my, and that's where I'm like you. Like, because like, I wake, never want to come across. Wake like, up. Right. I don't ever want to come off as insensitive mm -hmm. because I, oh, I, you, you I don't myself care about the as children at the Katie border? Richardson, What's your and yeah. I'm, I'm very like, you do what you do as long as it's not hurting other people, and I'm fine with it. But I don't understand how this is not national news every single day. I'm going to explain it. If we can get to Myron day. Fagan, I'll explain this it. This was back in what? In, um, well, know, he's, he started saying this in 1997. 1997. Right. But we could go – this laws, has been going all throughout right. history because what – if La you know about the Jonathan, fake the Jonathan Gosh SNL scandal, you guys familiar with that? Uh -uh. You guys just got to look into it. Um, basically, what they do at places like Bohemian Grove is they get presidents, literally the world leaders. Just like the Bible said, the leaders of the world will be gathering in secret. They're mm -hmm. going to be sacrificing children. They're going to be trying to take God's kingdom down. 
and you find out what goes on at Bohemian Grove. So Jonathan Gosh was this little kid that was kidnapped out of Nebraska. Oh, they yes, ended up yes, tying this yes. to the SNL loan scandal, uh, tying it to the to the bankers. They tied it to the bankers. Then they tied it to George I Bush, it to like, where these presidents they're either told to kill a kid. You want power? You got to kill a kid. Yep. Have sex with a kid. You got to do something yep. like that. They film it. And then they hold it over you for the rest of your life. Yep. Now, Myron Fagan, if we get to him, said that in 1967. A guy that leaves Hollywood luxury to start saying stuff like that. Again, this does not help your social life. You are not going to get laid more easily. <laughs> Things of the no. world. So back to Ted Gunderson, 2002. Um, now, this wasn't 2002 because he – no, this was 2002. Sounds a lot like what J. Edgar Hoover said. He said, this evil element has infiltrated virtually every level of society. It's in the government. They've gone out of their way, of course, to infiltrate the city, county, state, and the federal government. It's in the banking system, in the courts. It's in the prosecutors, the attorneys, the doctors. It's mind-boggling. Wow. It's unbelievable. That's pretty, that's cool. pretty impressive words for a guy that was, <laughs> yeah. sees it all. I mean, he would have seen yeah. every sort of crime available. Should I keep going? No, you said you're desensitized. You're not there yet? I am sick to my stomach. <laughs> oh, it but puts, a pit, it puts a pit in my stomach. Yeah, I'm very desensitized just because I become obsessed with it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's Over do some hugging time. and wiping the tears yeah, 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 away. Yeah, I'm going to no, speed no, up I'm a not, little bit so we can edit this better. thing into one episode. Yeah. Al, yeah, how much time we have? Like 10, 15? Perfect. All right, cram it all in, Dave. All right, I'm going to start talking a little bit We're faster. We're all going to stop talking. Yeah, go you go. 19, uh, in 1945, Myron Fagan, again, Hollywood actor. He's got access to a lot of famous people. He is, right after World War II, he has shown the secret documents that came out at the Yalta Conference. This is when Stalin, Roosevelt, and um, Churchill got together to essentially, quote, unquote, divide up the new world, the new world the New World Order. And he was shown recordings and microfilm of what was really agreed to in those meetings. He spent 20 years researching it. It rocked him. He came out in 1967 back then, vinyl albums, came out with three of them where he broke this plot down. And why don't we just, uh, eh, we won't, let me just read it. Here, I'm going to give you a couple quotes he said. Myron Fagan, 1967. You can go find this online in his own voice. In the final phases of the conspiracy, it's the same one Bill Cooper's talking about, same one Ted Gunderson's talking about, same one that I talk about, same one you guys have observed. In the final phases of the conspiracy, the one world government will consist of the king dictator, i.e. the Antichrist, head of the United Nations, head of the CFR, <clears throat> and, a, and a few billionaires, economists and scientists, who have proved their devotion to the great conspiracy, i.e. they've sacrificed children probably or done something so heinous that their loyalty is sealed in blood. All others are to be integrated into a vast conglomeration of mongrelized humanity, actually slaves. And it goes back to what James Madison was saying in the founding of our country. There is a plot to enslave all of humankind. It's been at work since the day, since Jesus was crucified because mm -hmm. that's when Satan's plan suddenly didn't work overt rule didn't work. He had to go hidden. I think it's the reason we had the Dark Ages, frankly, because he hid a lot of his evidence. Uh, Myron Fagan, another quote, 1967. The masterminds behind this great conspiracy have absolute control of all of our mass communications, media, especially television, the radio, the press, and Hollywood. Now, this was back when the FCC was still enforcing the fact that you couldn't own more than 25 media properties in the nation. That's gone now. Because now, five guys that all hang out with each other at places like Bohemian Grove, they control about 92% of everything we see in here. That's a really weird coincidence. What? That they all hang out with each other. And he goes on to say, um, Myron Fagan again, the main features of the Weishaupt plan. Now, this isn't, it's not like this plan started in 1776 with Adam Weishaupt. Weishaupt is just grabbing the baton from the royalty, the banking royalty of England, which came from the Knights Templar, which came from the popes. And where did the popes come from? Well, they were the Caesars. 
of Rome. They were never conquered. Like the Bible said, they would never be conquered. But they would go hidden until the last days. And here they are. They're starting to come out. We've got Roman government, really, everywhere. It's our system. It's in our architecture. He wrote, 1967, he said, the main features of the Weishaupt plan of the operation required his Illuminati to use monetary and sex bribery to obtain control of men already in high places in the various levels of all governments and other fields of endeavor. Once influential persons had fallen for the lies, deceits, and temptations of the Illuminati, they were to be held in bondage by, ap by application of political and other forms of blackmail, threats of financial ruin, public exposure, and physical harm, even death to themselves and loved members of their families. And it's so true. Whenever you're, if you're looking at conspiracies and you hear like the 9-11 pilot that was about to go testify and all of a sudden you find out, oh, he shoots his whole family and himself. A common MO, you can find it throughout history. It's such BS. No, he did not go crazy. He was shut up. This is how they shut people up. Now, we, we've been, the news has been all with this Mueller investigation. And if you follow Q, QAnon, which I don't, Q's either good or evil. He's either helping usher in the Antichrist, or he really is, you know, a representative of, of Trump, who maybe, while running even for president, suddenly was anointed by God. We'll we don't, never, we do we not, don't, we'll never know. We won't know we're until take our news from we're on the other side. Yeah. Right. But the point is, is Q for several years has been saying the real, the Mueller investigation was a ruse while we're out getting these 50,000, 60,000 sealed indictments. And who are those indictments against? Guys like Jeffrey Epstein. Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, the Obamas, the Bushes, mm -hmm. people. There are so many witnesses, but these are powerful men. I mean, what's a 25-year-old girl that, was, that survived some ritual something or other? She's, how can she speak out against a president? They're, they're going to laugh her out of time. Go look, at, go up, look up a Kathy O'Brien mm -hmm. who was in the Bush White House. Now, in order to – another quote from Fagan. Now, in order to give you a very clear picture of the satanic plot, now he linked it to Satanism, I will go back to its beginnings, clear back to the middle of the 18th century. While active in Hollywood, Fagan directed stars like Douglas Fairbanks, John Barrymore, and Humphrey Bogart. In reference to the satanic plot, he's, plot he stated, behind them are a comparatively small group of men whose sole objective is to enslave the whole world of humanity in their satanic plot of a one-world government which was predicted in this book, that Satan would get the whole world to unite under love and peace into a one-world government. He was somehow going to do it. And if you can't see how close we are to that, I don't know what to tell you. In 1945, at the urgent request of John T. Flynn, the famous author of The Roosevelt Myth, uh, it's a book, uh, While We Slept in the True Story of Pearl Harbor, Fagan attended a meeting in Washington, D.C., in D.C. where he was shown microfilm and recordings of the secret meetings at that Yalta conference I referenced in which he saw the gruesome real plans for what the new order had planned. He also then goes on to say, the idea was that those who direct the overall conspiracy could use the differences in those two so-called ideologies, because back then, Red Scare, Communism, 1967, Socialism, Communism, Marxism, Fascism, they're really all names for the same thing. Uh, an oligarch, an antichrist ruling over everybody. Um, with, you know, we, uh, we give everything we own to them and then they redistribute it as they see fit. And that they would use these differences to enable the Illuminati to divide larger and larger portions of the human race into opposing camps so that they could be armed and then brainwashed into fighting and destroying each other, which we see now. Black lives matter. White cops stink. Black cops bad. This guy's good. No good Mexicans. The Jews are behind it. The, you get the picture? That's happening in our world. It's a lot easier if we're fighting each other. Exactly. And I, I, I feel like Satan has like a vacation when it comes to the United States, to be completely honest with you. Between our media and our movies and our music and everything else, he kind of just gets to sit back and go, Oh, it's just going to work They're itself gonna out. Care of it for They're going to take yeah. care of it for me. I can exactly. go here. I can go here. And well, that's why this takes care of itself. Look, that. our country, I don't believe our country is blessed. And, you know, there is. I believe at one point it was. I do, too. Very because much so. we went from nothing yes. to becoming an economic 
world power, perhaps the greatest power that has ever existed in 200 years. And don't years. get that misconstrued for, like, make America great again. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying at one point we were very, I believe very we were. lost. And I think, I think that our, people, the people are still blessed. Very, very oh, blessed. Oh, absolutely. Some people, yes. But God yeah. does bless nations, and he does it via their leaders. Yes. A nation goes the way of its leader. You can go look through uh, the Old Testament. I don't want to get too far into that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Myron Fagan, last one. The question of how and why the United Nations is the crux of the great conspiracy to destroy the sovereignty of the United States and the enslavement of the American people within a UN one world dictatorship is a complete and unknown mystery to the vast majority of the American people. So this guy is linking up the United Nations to this one world demonic conspiracy. And then if we go and pair that up with something that David Spangler wrote, uh, Spangler, who is tied to the United Nations, a lot of organizations tied to it, he wrote this in 1978. This is a UN representative. He said, Lucifer, okay, Lucifer comes to give us the final gift of wholeness. If we accept it, then he is free and we are free. That is the Luciferic initiation. It is one that many people now and in the days ahead will be facing, for it is the initiation into the new age. That to me sounds like the mark of the beast. Are you going to take this mark? Here's your choice. Yep. You can take this little chip we made for you, and we'll put 50000 on your account. That's behind <laughs> curtain one, and you renounce Jesus and God and this, you know, Antichrist figure. You praise him. Mm-hmm. You'll have some 666 identifier. Or you get what's behind curtain number two. You get your head chopped off. Right. And, and if you are not grounded in this book, do you know how many people are going to blow it at the last second? That's why we do this show. Yeah. Last guy we won't be able to get into, Aaron Russo. He was, became friends with Nicholas Rockefeller. Nicholas Rockefeller pulled him aside. Uh, 11 months before 9-11 said there's going to be this big event in nine, uh, coming up in New York. We're going to use it to bring in the New World Order. And we're going to chip everybody. And Aaron Russo, uh, where's the photograph of him with Nicholas Rockefeller in here? Um, and you can go see this online. He actually talks about the fact that uh, he was invited to be in the Illuminati. He turned it down. He blew the whistle on him at the beginning of 2007. And surprise, surprise, he was dead by the end of that year. Yeah. These are four men that I consider true American patriotic mm-hmm. slash biblical heroes. Look up, look them up, find out where that information leads you. At the end of the day, folks, we don't say these things to scare you. And it, I know it can be uncomfortable. I've been there. But it is wise to understand our adversary. And our enemy is ravenous. And he is seeking who to mm-hmm. kill, rob, and steal from. And he's very real. I have seen him with my own eyes. I will never deny his existence because it told me about God's existence. Yep. And our only protection, the only way, you are not, no guns, no amount of food, no bomb shelters are going to help you. <laughs> The only way to get off this prison planet is through Jesus Christ, where the cameras find out who he is, get to know him much more than just your life is riding on this. Yep. Anyone else have anything else to add? No. Great I first mean, show. even follow yeah. that? Like, yeah. we're you don't good. follow that up with Praise anything. Praise God. Ditto. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, we're going to follow it up with a beer at Nick knows. We are. Which will be edited yeah. out of this show. Okay. Yeah. Edited, yeah. Katie, Cody. Rachel. Thank you for having me. Thank Charles, Rachel. Melissa. Charles. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. Wonderful. Yeah. Love you guys. Thank All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week.